Occasionally, you need to build a web app that remembers stuff. HTML5 provides for an easy construct to handle the storage of simple elements in the local browser. Let's take a look at some of the options. Now, I've built here a very simple page. The only thing on this page is a form element with an input field that just tracks a name. This is not a real web app or any kind of production example, but it's just something to show you how to handle local storage. Now, this page is best viewed in the Safari browser with the developer tools turned on. If you go to the Safari menu, you can turn on the developer tools by going to preferences, switching over to the advanced tab, and clicking on show develop menu and menu bar. Here's our menu. We can go to web inspector to take a look at more detail about how the page is built. I'm going to add an on-click handler to the input field to make sure that when something changes about this input field by somebody typing on it and hitting tab or return, then it'll execute this function that I'm going to program called handle change. And it'll pass along information about the current element. I'm going to create the function which takes in the form element that was passed and it adds the my name element into local storage from the form. So here we see that the form element value is passed along to a variable called my name, which is stored in local storage. We can add as many things to this local storage object as we want. It's also going to print out an alert with the item in local storage. I'm also going to modify my body tag so that it loads up the value when the page loads. Let's test it out by typing something in here. As I hit the tab key, you can see that the variable comes up in the alert box. I'm going to hit OK. Now in Safari, you can see this local files element under local storage. You can see that there's a key value pair here with the name of my variable, my name, and the value, which is my first name. So as you can see, you can put stuff into the local storage variable by using this dot syntax and adding variable names and then assigning them values. You can also retrieve things from local storage by using the method called getItem and specifying which item you want to get. Same way that you use getItem, you can also use setItem to set variables instead of using this dot syntax. We can also use an array notation to store things when we need to develop this name dynamically. We'll explore that later in this chapter. If you want to remove an item from local storage, you can use the method called remove item and then pass along the variable name you want to remove. If I want to clear up all the variables in local storage, I can add the method clear here to clear all the variables in local storage. Let's create a button that does that. Right after this input element, I'm going to add my button. When somebody clicks on this button, it's going to clear out all the values in the local storage area and set the value of our input field to nothing. If I hit this clear button, it will clear out the variable from here as well as from local storage. Now, occasionally when you update a local variable, you have to watch out because Safari fails to update this key value pair window. So I'm just going to click on the cookies area and click on local files and then click back here to see that my variable is really there. In the same way, when I clear the variable, you can see that it disappears from here, but it's still showing up in the key value pair window. If I refresh, you'll see that it's disappeared. So be careful about always trusting this key value pair area. Sometimes it doesn't update. Local storage is a quick and easy way of storing up information that you want your web pages to remember. We'll explore this in the rest of this chapter by building a little web app to handle ratings on our photos.